Graham Rushton is my guest on the afternoon show today, and he is from Unearth UK. He is a detectorist, um, and you have an incredibly interesting job, Graham. Well, that's uh, that's one way of putting it, Andrea. Yes, uh, metal detecting is my life now, unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way we look at it, uh, pretty much twenty four seven. Right. Now, you are the star um, of this TV series, which is airing this week. It's Henry Cole's Great British Treasure Hunt. Tell us a little bit about that show and how you got involved in it. Well, it's all rather exciting. Um, we've been filming since for the series since last August, September, and it finished in January this year. So we were pretty much full on with it all. Um, we did a pilot way back in 2020. I remember that. Sub- Yes, yeah. I remember that. Didn't you find something Roman in that one? We did. We did. We found some nice Roman coins and other artefacts and things. Um, and off the back of that, ITV, in their wisdom, deemed it to be such a success that then the series has followed. So we had to wait a little bit because of COVID and things. Yeah. But we finally got the ball rolling around about August, September last year to film the series, which is here tonight, which was rather exciting for us all. Yes, absolutely. So were you filming over the over the autumn mon- months then? Autumn and winter, yeah. So well, we that's went from... quite, un- quite unusual, isn't it, to film a show like that in the winter? It is. And, and do you know what? The weather was a bit of a challenge as well. So we were detecting in minus three um, yeah. some of the days. Wasn't the uh, ground, a bit, ground a bit hard for digging up? It was. It was, as you will see um, this <laughs> week when it's, uh, when it's on television. So, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge. But it was a hugely enjoyable experience. Um, I've, I've been lucky to do other television um, bits and pieces in the past, so I was quite used to being in front of a camera. But doing a series, it's quite intense. Right. Um, but but I, th- I think, uh, putting my neck on the block a little bit, a lot, a lot of people will enjoy this series. It's fantastic television. Yes, absolutely. What time does it air? At 8pm on ITV4, and that's every night of the week this week. So, yeah, look out for it. Henry Cole's Great British Treasure Hunt. It's going to be fantastic. Right. OK, then let's take a little bit of a break now, shall we? And then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about this series because uh, I just love this sort of stuff. Love it. Joining me this afternoon is Graham Rushton from Unearthed UK in Dalton, who is the star of the new television series, Henry Cole's Great British uh, treasure hunt. Uh, now we were talking a little bit before uh, Graham about about this series. Um, tell us, you know, I'm always intrigued as to how the how they put together um, a whole television television series. It, 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 tell us a little bit about the mechanics of it. How does it actually work? It's quite um, an interesting concept. So what you'll see is five teams of two detectorists. So there's, there's two of us in each team, five teams, and we're all pretty much up against each other. We've all got different locations to detect. And at the end of the 48 hours that we've got, uh, we come back and um, it's judged on who makes the best finds over the period of two days. Uh, we're quite lucky, actually, because we've got four people from Cumbria, including myself. So we've right. got Kate and, Sh- Kate and Shirley Teasdale from Carlisle. Um, they're also, they also star in it. And we've got Louise Ratcliffe from Keswick. So we've got four Cumbrians uh, out of the 10 detectorists. So we're we're flying the flag for Cumbria a little bit. Yeah, it's um, rather exciting. But it's it's, like I said earlier, it's a challenge. It's not as easy as it looks. Um, And there was periods through the series that we found it extremely difficult um, to actually find anything. Um, So um, it was a bit of a challenge, but hugely, hugely enjoyable at the end of it. I mean, the first one, we didn't really expect... Uh, well, we didn't really know what to expect, and we took a bit of a um, you know, laugh and a bit of a, a giggle at times, but it got really serious through the series, so you'll see that this week, I think. And how do they do how do you do it? Do you do you record like one program at a time, or is it sort of you know, you record on mass and then it's down to the editors at the end of the day to, to no, keep it it's, together? It, we're all we're all in different locations throughout the UK, so we're we're in places like Suffolk and Essex, and and we're up here in Cumbria detecting, and the Cotswolds and Oxfordshire and places like that, and they're pretty much um, filmers from start to finish over a period of two or three days, and then that's all stitched together and edited for the for each program uh, for each uh, episode, 
Um, and they pretty much follow that suit right through the series. Right. Um, so we don't really know what to expect. We yeah. don't really know what to expect. We don't really know what the cameras have, have caught and, and captured until right. we actually see the final. So so we're pretty much in suspense ourselves because right. we don't really know what to expect uh, tonight <laughs> in front of the in front of the uh, in front of the TV. So yeah, rather exciting and nerve wracking as well. Have you got any? Um, have you got any little juicy bits of gossip you can tell us that you? That... Ooh, <laughs> I think I think I think the one thing I can say is I think people will be surprised um, just how good the teams of Detectorist are. Right. So I've been detecting since I was a child for over forty years, and at the start of it, I thought, well, this is going to be a bit of a breeze, uh, but it was anything but. Um, so I think people are going to be quite surprised at the end. That's right. All I can say. Did you have any awkward characters to deal with? Do you know what? No. Um, I think probably I've been the most awkward character out of them all. Um, uh, and that's and that's the feedback from Henry Cole himself and some of the um, cameramen and the sound guys. I uh, can be quite prickly at times. I don't know if that's <laughs> just my nature. Um, but the rest of them were pretty much... Um, oh, they were, everybody was really nice. I mean, there's such a nice group of people, the cameramen, the cast and the film crews and, and Henry Cole himself, it was a, just a great privilege to actually do this. And I'm going to look back when I'm older and think, wow, you know, I starred in that series. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Right, OK, we'll have another little break, shall we? And then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about you and um, your history of detector detectoring. Have I said that right? Detecting. <laughs> Detecting. You, you nearly got it right. <laughs> Graham Rushton is with me this afternoon and we're talking about uh, detectoring. Um, now, Graham, you've been running this business in Dalton for a, a number of years now, uh, Unearthed UK. Um, how did you get into detectoring in the first place? Well, I started detecting as a child. My next door neighbour, I lived on Walney Island and I had a next door neighbour called Sean, who I grew up with. Uh, with me, he was my best friend until he passed away, sadly, in 2019. And he actually got me into detecting when I was seven years old. He had a detector, a very basic one, and we used to go up and down the beaches of Walney and other places, finding lots of weird and wonderful things. And ever since then, I've been hooked on detecting. So um, right through my teenage years and into my adulthood, uh, I've been out detecting in all weathers, up and down the country, pretty much every week, finding lots of nice things, uh, a lot of junk as how, well. So, how, o yeah. how old were you? Um, and what was it that was your first big find? Ooh, um, oh, well, I think as a child, I've, I always remember finding when I was about eight years old, a medieval buckle, which yeah. would have been worn by, you know, a peasant probably way back in the 14th century. That really captured my imagination. Yeah. And that just followed after that, really. And, and how did you know that that's what you'd, that's what you'd got? Well, the thing is, you, you can tell by the, the shape and the design and the feel of the object and the colour because it has a patina on it when it's because it's been buried for such a long time. And we have reference books that we can sort of match these objects to as well. So we can pretty much know um, pretty from the start what it is, et cetera, et cetera. But it does take, with coins especially, it does take some time to identify them because there's that many of different different types, Roman, medieval, Viking, mm. Saxon coins. Uh, so that can take some time. But, yeah, we pretty much know now. We're pretty much experts in our own right in the things that we find. Would you say you were an expert in local history because you've had to research it so much? Do, do you know what? I'll have to be honest with people. Um, when I left school, my history results were the worst out of all the rest <laughs> of the class members. Um, and since I started detecting properly, my history... Um, as pro I could probably get, you know, really good results in my exams now in history. So, yeah, I, I do know a lot of local history. I, I study it. I, um, I'm not an expert, I don't think, but I think I'm pretty much, I can hold me ho hold me on to most, uh, you know, yeah. historical uh, questions and answers, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, there must be something really special about finding something in the earth and knowing that you're the first person to touch it again since it was put there probably yeah i think it's the nearest thing to time travel you're going to get because you're holding objects that the last person held was maybe a thousand years ago yeah. and it is it does give you a great buzz and of course we've got to also mention that we've got to stick by the rules and regulations around metal detecting we've got to make sure we do things by the book and and uh, obey to the treasure laws that are out there 
and we've got to gain permission. You just, you know, people have got to remember they just can't go anywhere with a metal detector. They've got to gain permission to do so. But, you know, after all that, it's one of the most rewarding and, you know, greatest hobbies on the planet. You're out in the fresh air, you're, you're unearthing, or carefully unearthing objects from the past. It's just, a, it's just a wonderful, wonderful hobby if it's done in the right manner. Okay, let's take another little break here. Let's listen to a bit more music, shall we? And then we'll come back and talk about uh, perhaps some of your best finds and how people can get involved in detectoring. I'm here with Gray and Rushton. We're talking about detectoring this afternoon on the afternoon show. Um, now, you, I'm sure, Graham, that you've got some great stories to tell about some of the finds that you've you've made over the years. What, which one would you say was your favourite? Do you know it's it's very difficult to pick a single coin or artifact to say that's my best one because I found I've been lucky enough to find that many different types. I found Roman gold coins, medieval gold coins, Saxon. Uh, such an artifacts, gold artifacts, lots of different things. The, the ones that stand out are probably, I, I found a, a medieval gold coin in 2013, which was rather special. It was a, uh, something called a half noble. Of right. King Hen, oh, let me get it right. King, King Edward III. Edward which III. Is about 14th century. Yeah, it's a real, yeah. really, it was about three months wages back then. So right. whoever lost it would have been rather sore. Yeah. Uh, and I found a really rare coin in 2018, which was a King Stephen and Matilda penny. I didn't right. actually know what it was when I found it because I've never seen one before. That turned out to be quite rare. Uh, that went to auction and realised about £10,500. So uh, Stephen and really Matilda. So you're talking about like that would be the time like that, that Furness Abbey was established. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mid, mid 12th century. So it's quite an ancient coin, but quite rare. There was only so many of them made. And right. I was lucky enough to stumble ac across one in Yorkshire. So, yeah, I was quite quite happy at that. But there's lots of different finds that I've made, Roman Roman finds and Iron Age finds, even Bronze Age finds. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I've got to pretty much keep it all together. As you know, There's not one that really stands out because I've got that many. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens to them? Do they go off to a museum or are you allowed to keep them? Well, it's, it's, um, if it's treasure, of course, that's got to be handed in and reported within 14 days. So if it's a hoard of coins, that's then got to be reported to the fines layers and officer or the local coroner in that particular area. If it's a single find, like a coin find, then the landowner actually owns that particular find. Unless you've got an agreement in place with the landowner for a 50-50 split, then the landowners own pretty much everything that you find. Most of our farmers now, we've got agreements in place and to be fair we hand a lot of our finds over to the to the farmers and landowners because they love to see what's coming off their far, uh, farms mm. yeah. so some of our farmer friends have got huge collections of coins and we just, we just love finding them and handing them over so it's rather exciting for us to see that side of it so yeah that's pretty much it in a nutshell you've got to get an agreement in place right from the start with the landowner what about how you would then get into detectoring if you know people listening to this think oh i, lo I love that you know we've we've I'd love to just go and have yeah, a the, see what's around. Does it is an ex, is it an expensive hobby? There's a common misconception out there that you've got to spend a lot of money to buy detectors. So when we first started, they were relatively cheap, and then the prices pretty much rose steeply for the top end metal detectors. But now, the manufacturers are making really, really good metal detectors with high levels of performance for not a lot of money. So you can you can buy pretty much a detector for a couple of hundred quid that really does the job. It's a professional detector. It's got really good performance and you know you're going to find things. So, yeah, you don't have to break the bank to start detecting. Um, you know, I started with a, a cheap and cheerful metal detector uh, and it did me proud for a number of years. And that's pretty much the same today. There's a lot of metal detectors on the market for very little money that will do the job. Would you recommend that people join a group or can people just sort of, you know, go and have a word with the farmer and, and off you go? Yeah, the, the, there's two there's two sides to it. There's if you've got a local group, an active group in the area, then it's uh, worth joining because you'll learn a lot and you'll pick up a lot of hints and tips. If not, um, there's nothing stopping people, you know, going along to their local farm or friends that may have land and farmers and landowners that they may know just to ask permission to detect. But you've always got to ask permission right from the start. You just can't wander every in anywhere. You're lucky enough to detect on most of the beaches in the UK as well. Um, as long as they're not privately owned, you can actually detect on them. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much straightforward. Just you know, if you've got a piece of land that you know that you can detect on, you've got permission off the landowner. 
go and go and enjoy yourself on it. Fantastic. Okay, remind us again. What is the television series, and when can people catch it? Yeah, so it's uh, Henry Cole's Great British Treasure Hunt, and that's that's at eight pm tonight on ITV Four, and it runs right through the week till Friday. Okie doke. And then no doubt it'll be on a, a catch up um, facility as well, won't it? It will. It will. There's talk of it going on ITV One. Uh, soon afterwards as, as well so uh, we may have to get clarification for that but that's uh, that's what we're, the understanding is so at some point in the future it'll be on ITV main channel Fantastic, well good luck with it and um, it's been fascinating talking to you, thank you so much No problem, thanks very much for having me